And I don't think Jesus has been portrayed in all his awesomeness in the church by me, by anyone. I think that it's yet to be revealed how great he really is. I mean, we get pieces of it, but, you know, people are looking and, um, but I, actually, you know, he's kept me all through the years. I was um, a single mom. I went through a really, really hard divorce and had to raise three kids on my own. And truthfully, if it wasn't for Jesus, even in my, the little bit that I knew him, you know, I wouldn't have made it. He kept me in a place of peace, even when my world was falling apart. And uh, when I didn't have money, he kept me going, you know, and there was always food on the table, and we always had a roof over our head, and I, 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 I mean, I have so many testimonies and um, so many remembrances of him being real in my life. And now with this new revelation of him and the finished work on the cross and how I don't have to add anything to it. It's not about me being good enough to receive it, but it's because he he knew we weren't good enough and he did it for us. It's, it's even better news than I knew. And um, so I think that the reason people look for um, some spiritual answers from the East or, you know, in, in New Age is because they, they haven't met the real Jesus. They haven't really looked into what he bought for them on the cross and received it. You know, you just, it's, you use your words. And I love what you say about words. You know, you have this revelation, a personal revelation on how we have power in our words. We're actually co-creators with Christ. You know, we speak it out. God the Father spoke and there was light. He said, let there be light and there was light. We speak and we are actually creating our future. And how many times are people, you know, speaking negative and rehearsing all the pain? I love your revelation uh, on that. Yeah, it's almost a life message. And... Um, and I think it just goes along with um, just the power of um, things that that we take in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, of course, when we um, hear something pleasant, it brings us joy. I mean, just even even naturally, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But um, they, we really can take control of that situation. By um, you know, by saying, "Oh, I'm I'm getting better all the time," or you know, whatever's being healed. Or you know. using the word, you yes, know, uh, exactly. the word says, "I'm healed by His stripes, I'm healed." And I like, I have favorites like, "I have the mind of Christ." Mm -hmm. I speak as an oracle of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Like especially when you're feeling like a mess. You know, just say it out loud. Put it out there in the universe. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Our words have power. And um, Jesus uh, said, you know, call those things that are not as if they were. And and she'll do that. In conversation, somebody will be, and I do it too now, and uh, somebody will be saying something really terrible. And, um, and we'll just say, you know what? That's not true anymore. Net, today is a new day, and I see that that's cut off from your life. And, you know, you are beautiful in the Lord, and you have confidence, and you have power. And so we we use our words. Well, we, we do. Create. We do. It is exactly true. We are co-creating with the Lord. That's mm -hmm. exactly uh, the relationship that we have now when, um, when we know... Uh, our Heavenly Father, we know Jesus, that He is, you know, He's expressing Himself through His children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're made in His image. Yeah. He spoke the worlds into existence. He used words, you know, according to the Bible. He used words to create. And then it says, we're made in His image. I think we're using words to create also. So it's something to think about and it's something to do, right? It really is, and you can make a decision again 
when you're, um, you can even catch yourself if something wants to come out that's not uh, positive, to just turn it around. Um, even in talking about a situation, um, we can say, oh, you know, that person is being healed of cancer. Or, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have to say it in the negative, but in the in the positive term. Mm -hmm. um, and it is the truth, um, because the Lord, you know, He relates Himself to us through the Holy Spirit, but we are mm -hmm. really His hands and His um, His voice and His His way of expressing love on the earth. Um, since He went to heaven and gave us His Holy Spirit, which dwells in us, that uh, we're the ones now that mm -hmm. are declaring these things. Mm -hmm. And so even uh, for ourselves, it, 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 it makes sense even mm -hmm. to feel good about ourselves. Yeah. We just say these things, and especially when we say things that are in the Scripture. Yeah, the Word of God, believe it or not, and I believe it, it is a living Word. You can read many self-help books, and there'll always be more to read because they're just books, right? And, uh, you know, you, you're trying to do it in your own strength. But the Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And that's what the scripture itself says about the Word of God. So, it's really fun, you know, if you're praying, if you're sick, you, you find a scripture on healing, a promise, where you can put your feet, you know, and say, well, the Word of God says, when you're hurting in your body, say, you know what? You know what, body? The, the Word of God says that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. It says that by his wounds I am healed. So you better line up with the Word of God. You know, we have to buffet our bodies into submission to the Word of God. That's what you do when you exercise. You're making your body do what you want it to do. Or when you fast or when you cut down on food, your body will be screaming, I'm hungry! Feed <laughs> me! <laughs> but you, your spirit, is in charge, right? In fact, we are spirit. I have a body, I'm a spirit, I live in a body, I have a soul, and when I leave my body, you know, people call that dying, actually we just leave our body, our spirit leaves our body, our body's just laying there, see our spirit is the boss of our body, body can't do anything without the spirit, right, Absolutely. but the body wants to be in charge, it will say, I'm sick. <laughs> So you have to tell your body, you know, you use your spirit, use the Word of God that's alive and powerful. And I love that, the way you do that. She'll just speak into someone's life in a very natural way and just bless them. In fact, um, when, when we say, God bless you, God bless you, you know, a real blessing in the Old Testament, the Jewish people, they would take their children and say, you're going to be successful. You know, I see that you have a, a real gift for you know, speaking, you're strong, you're a good hunter, they would, that's a blessing, you're saying, you're speaking into someone's life, beautiful words of encouragement and power, empowerment, right? Exactly right, and um, it's something that really is a great thing to do, mm -hmm. um, and we can do it without anyone even really knowing what we do, and and really that's what we're doing in conversation all the time. Mm -hmm. We're that's either right. blessing people, we're encouraging them, we're saying good things, or we're, we're not. And, um, you know, or, that or cursing them. Well, that's <laughs> the cursing is. isn't some, some nasty word, it's actually saying negative things about someone or to them. And when somebody says something like that to you, it's really important to use your words to speak truth. Don't just let it pass. Mm -hmm. Like I had this boss, he, it, it, right in the middle of a meeting, he would say, and look at this one here, she she doesn't know what she's doing. She, and, and I would just say, well, that's not true. Actually, I, I have a really good grasp on my dreams and goals. You know, I would just speak out because I, I learned, you know, I, don't, I, I already know about that from when I was little. You know, the nuns used to say terrible things to us. And uh, 
people don't realize, you know, so we forgive them and all, but yeah, you got to take control of your destiny and speak life, right? Life. Not it, death. Yes, and, um, and it's amazing. I mean, we can um, speak joy, we can speak, um, you know, <laughs> anything we, that comes across our path, across our mind. And uh, like I was saying, when we're talking to people, that, you know, just in the conversation. Yeah. It doesn't just, have to be weird. It doesn't have to be it should weird be beautiful at all. <laughs> and, 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 you know, when I was in Oakland, there were so many kids that had been sort of neglected out on the street, not because their parents didn't love them, but they were so busy, they had to work two jobs maybe. Uh, I don't know what this, all the circumstances were, but if I would say any little thing of encouragement to them, oh my gosh, you could just see them suck it up like a sponge. And it was beautiful to see how it changed them. Do you remember when you were a kid and some teacher or somebody took time to say something nice about you? how it it just thrilled you it made all the difference you know let's do that more yes absolutely that we're you know called to that actually and it, it again we have the choice you know we can decide do we want to speak the negative things into being or the or the good things and so again with uh, even talking about um, uh, making decisions about what we let come into our, um, you know, into our, through our eyes and through our hearing, um, to even think about the television and the internet, and are we going to let bad news continually be the things that we're kind of feeding on? That's a good point, and that's why I don't do it enough, but uh, we should really read the Bible, the encouraging one, parts, you know, that really speak to us, because uh, it, it just builds up your mind, so that when negative things happen, it'll come up in your mind. It, the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance, some scripture that empowers you for life. Because Jesus said, I came that they would have life, and have it more abundantly. Excuse me, he said the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. So, I mean, whatever your concept of the devil, negative energy, I don't know. It, it's okay. But but interpret it as you will. But when you hear something that, that kills or, or destroys your faith, counteract it with words of life. Or say, no, you know, I, I don't see that. Actually, I feel like I was, you know, born to be an overcomer. You know, I feel like I have a bright future. Jesus said that, um, I wish, what did, oh, there's this beautiful scripture that I use for kids sometimes. Um, uh, he, he has a future and a hope for you, you know. What's that scripture? An expected end. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there's all different kinds of uh, ways you can use the scripture to speak life, to encourage yourself and create your future. Absolutely true. And uh, we're going to be, you know, we speak anyway. Mm -hmm. And we read anyway. We watch television anyway. We are on the internet anyway. And so, um, you know, to just be wise and um, not let things influence us. You know, that is so true. The enemy does come to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And so he uses these various things, like the media, um, the news.